Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm going to do a first impressions mini review of Complex Age by Yui Sakama. I just finished reading Complex Age actually a couple of weeks ago, but I've been quite sick and I haven't been able to film this video and I really wanted to film it right after I read it because I had quite a lot of thoughts about it at that time. So hopefully I can, you know, think about what it was that was really kind of getting to me when I read this. Um, it was just published this year in 2016. The second volume has been published. It has just come out. I got my volume yesterday in the mail. So it is still um, very new in the series. If you want to hop in, now is a good time to do it. It's not hard to pick up things at the beginning of a series. Um, and this is published by Kodansha Comics, who generally have a pretty um, good uh, publishing rating, in my opinion. They're, they're a good publisher. They usually pick good titles and they have generally uh, decent quality publishing. Um, and this one is uh, no different. It's, you know, it's pretty much what you would expect from Kodansha. This is about a young woman who's 26 years old. Her name is Nagisa and she is a cosplayer. She is a very passionate, hardcore cosplayer. She's not the type of cosplayer that's like, I like that character. Let me wear that costume. Okay, next time I'm going to wear whatever. She has a passion for a particular character and she wants to do her very best at representing that character, at being that character whenever she goes out. Um, and so she dedicates sort of all of her time and finances to making her cosplays the best, but she always plays the same character. Um, and um, this character that she likes to play is one of those very like fluffy, very cute, very sweet, kind of short, um, lacy, you know, like super girly characters and she tends to be um, kind of tall and a little bit plain and so she, for one, feels a little bit out of out of character when she plays this character, even though she loves the character so much, she feels a little bit out of place in it. So she has some, some definitely some um, self doubt uh, about herself playing this character, but she still continues. Um, but she definitely is something that concerns her uh, and it, it bothers her quite a lot. Um, and then the other thing is that she is older. She's 26 years old. Um, I can understand the idea of becoming older in a fandom. You know, her interest is in something that most people would say, well, when when are you going to grow out of that? You know, you're a little too old, old for that. You know, this is something that kids do. And so she has a lot of self-doubt, you know, and people kind of notice her. Um, at the same time, she's just flat out ashamed of being otaku, and so she uh, hides the fact that she likes to do cosplay and dress up and go to conventions from her family. Nobody except for a very, very small group of friends actually know that she's into this thing. Basically, this is a story about her and her self-doubt, about her age, about her um, kind of physical appearance and um, what she wants to do. You know, does she want to stop? or should she continue doing something that she's passionate about? And I absolutely have had this discussion with myself. Should I stop? Should I sell my collection? Should I say, well, enough is enough. You are older now. You don't need to be doing this anymore. And obviously you can tell what decision I made for myself. Um, and this is sort of what needs to happen um, here. Um, personally, I found actually the first half of the story to be a little bit dry, a little draggy, and I found that she was a little, there was a little too much self-doubt. Like, I don't, um, because, you know, if you're passionate about something, it really, like, you're passionate about it. So, like, who cares? <laughs> you're passionate about it. Um, and so that idea kind of bothered me a little bit. But then the second story actually introduces another person who is in her mid-30s and is married and um, all until like this time she's kind of been secretly um, involved in goth Lolita. So she really likes to dress up in frilly dresses, in kind of Victorian gowns and like kind of just dripping in lace. Like she loves that and that's her thing and that's sort of one of the things that her husband liked about her. But she has made this decision that it's over and she needs to be a grown-up and so she pushes past and makes the other decision. She makes the decision to go the other direction um, and to give up the thing that she's passionate about. And that was a really uh, good story, a really thoughtful story, and um, more than anything, 
um, it just makes you think, like, what are you doing in the fandom? What is your purpose here? Why do you love this thing that you love? And what does that love actually mean? Like, this is what this story is about. Um, there was a quote on the back. Um, it says, how do you fit in when you have to keep your biggest passion a secret? And I actually, like, yeah, she is keeping it a secret there, you know, both of these t characters, they end up keeping a secret, but I really didn't think it was about that. I felt, because maybe it's because it related to me more, that it was more about what do you do when you hit that point where the thing that you're in love with isn't aging with you. It's not an, a thing that most adults are into, and uh, that sort of what I found the message was in this. I'm not entirely sure where the story is going. I don't know if they kind of all find each other and become this great like kind of rumbunctious group of otaku women or if they all kind of decide I'm not passionate about this thing anymore or at least they all kind of uh, come of age even though they're in kind of mid-age. Um, I'm not really sure where the story is going because it is just an introduction of characters, but it is very interesting conversation. It is something that I felt like I really related to, and I could see myself, or at least some of the discussion I've had with myself, um, as I have gotten into anime and manga. You know, this is something that I have been doing for 25 years. It's not... Uh, something that I plan on stopping anytime soon, but I've had that discussion with myself. So anyway, obviously I really enjoyed this story. I still only gave it uh, four out of five stars, and I just thought that the art was a little bit weak. It did feel a little bit more kind of like an interpretation of what uh, manga looks like, you know, like manga style, and it does feel quite styled. Um, there are some nice drawings in here, but there wasn't too many moments in here where I was, like, I had to really stop and look at a panel and really absorb myself in it. I think there was about two times where I just really was caught up in the art, but for the most part, it, most part this is a character-based story. Um, Art-wise, I wasn't super thrilled with it, but I do think that the rendering of costume is very superior, it's very well done, and it's very well handled. Um, clothing looks like clothing, it's very billowy or weighted, um, and definitely uh, styled in a way that would match a story about cosplay, and uh, really, really, I think, was handled well. Um, the main character, for me, is not as engaging. She definitely is a little bit weaker, which I'm not always um, receptive to. I definitely like the second character more, and um, I did look this up online, and it turns out that the second character was actually the first story that Yui Sakama wrote. This is the story that Yui Sakama wrote to introduce the concept of of this uh, series, and so they got that that uh, story published, and then decided to switch characters for the main bulk of the story. And so, actually, the second character is her first story, and personally, is definitely the stronger of the two. So I really hope that there is more of this second character um, continuing through the manga. This is rated 16+. plus. It is a seinen title, which means that it was actually authored for adult men and not adult women, even though a lot of it reads for adult women. The main characters are women who are kind of going through this midlife crisis or coming of age type story. Um, there are a few moments in it where I did think, hey, yeah, this is intended for a male to be reading. Um, there was one moment in particular that irked me, and that was when um, her friend comes running in and says, I just saw pictures of your underwear while you were cosplaying on the internet. And she turns to her friend and says, that's the price we pay for cosplay. And they kind of just move on. For one thing, I don't mind that she didn't kind of fly off her handle because I didn't really care to hear about that side of the story. It's handled really often in manga you know, men taking inappropriate photos, especially during cosplay. Um, yeah, that happens a lot in manga. I hope it doesn't happen that often in real life, but I'm assuming it does. But it is not the price you pay for cosplay. It isn't something that you should expect, and it is not appropriate, and it is illegal, and it is disgusting, and I didn't like that message, obviously. But we move on. So there is that. Um, for the most part, I would say the 16 plus rating is appropriate. I don't know where the story goes, so I don't know if it becomes 
uh, sexual or if there's something that is uh, more adult in it uh, towards, uh, you know, the end. Um, but since it is about women who are kind of making judgments about their age and about like how old they are and why are they interested in something that's sort of still very youthful, I do feel like the the 16 plus makes more sense because it really is more relatable to an adult who is actually still interested in uh, anime and manga. Definitely something that I related to and I'm really interested in reading more of the series. Um, I've been finding it really interesting to read so many series lately that have or that feature female otaku. Um, Genji Ken's second season is another one um, and Princess Jellyfish is another one. Both I've been reading recently and then Complex Age. I'm sure there's quite a lot but these are particularly female otaku which um, generally are not as represented. You know it's Definitely there's a lot of stories about male otaku, but these are about female otaku. Really liked that. I thought this was a very thoughtful story, definitely related to uh, thoughts that I've had before. Um, I enjoyed it quite a lot and I highly recommend it, um, especially if you're a little bit older in the fandom or if you're kind of questioning where you fit in in the fandom, um, this will be a good read for you. Anyway, thanks for watching my video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now!